I think maybe most of us would agree that Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, elevated himself to a position just above that of Pope itself. It's been amazing. So Fauci goes out to neighborhoods in Washington, D.C. with a cadre of people knocking on doors and trying to push vaccinations. Uh, I, I think it's interesting where he blames the whole issue of uh, people resistant to vaccinations and basically blames COVID on Republicans. Let's watch. What are we going to do about those other states? Oh, my Just... God. They're going to keep the outbreak smoldering in the country. It's so crazy. I mean, okay. the, they're not doing it because they say they don't want to do it. They're Republicans. They don't like to be told what to do. Right. And we got to break that, you know, unpack that. How you guys doing with vaccine? Oh, you have to wonder, did Fauci not realize the camera was rolling and there was audio of that? because it makes him look like the partisan hack that he is, uh, blaming that Republicans don't like to be told what to do. You know, Fauci, let me tell you something. That's not just Republicans. Nobody with his brain screwed on right wants to be told by the government what to do. It's not what freedom means. It's just insane. So he's, um, he's going door to door. This particular moment mm, didn't go real well. People in America are not settled with the information that's been given to us right now. So I'm not going to be lining up taking a shot on a vaccination for something that wasn't clear in the first place. And then you all create a shot in miraculous time. It takes years to but create vaccination. Well, it, it, used vaccine. Vaccine. Okay, it used to take years. Okay, it you used to. You know how you know how many years were invested in this in this approach? About 20 years of science to get us to be able to do it. 20 years is not good. enough. And nine months is definitely not no. enough for nobody to be taking no vaccination that yeah. you all came up with. The dude didn't want to take the shot. I mean, it becomes pretty clear. I find it interesting. Where was Tony Fauci's mask? I thought this was going to save the planet if we all had a mask on. He didn't have one on. Yeah. How, how interesting. But again, this is typical for people like Tony Fauci. He tells us what to do, but he doesn't necessarily want to do it himself. I thought this was a very powerful moment this week in the U.S. Senate in a hearing where Rand Paul, Kentucky senator, um, confronts the CEO of Moderna, one of the uh, manufacturers of the initial vaccines, and points out that Moderna gave the National Institutes of Health $400 million in royalties and whether or not this might be a conflict of interest. Let's watch. Do you believe it creates a conflict of interest for the government employees who are making money now off of the vaccine to also be dictating the policy about how many times we have to take the vaccine? Good morning, Senator. Uh, indeed, we recently made, a, before Christmas last year, a $400 million payment to the NIH. Yeah, basically, we wrote that big check. Oh, of course, we didn't expect anything in return. We're not that stupid. We just are not. The Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, Xavier Becerra, brags about not making America healthier, not making uh, prescription drugs more affordable. No, he's got something that really, really is his highest agenda. And this is pretty amazing. Climate change. Watch this establish a climate change and health equity office at the Department of Health and Human Services, not the EPA at HHS. We establish an environmental justice office, not in the Department of Justice, but in HHS. Because we know that the folks who are hit first and worst when it comes to climate degradation are in the minority communities. I honestly cannot believe what I watched just then an environmental justice officer. Because if you're poor and living out somewhere in America, barely making it, the thing you are interested in most is an environmental justice officer. And to have somebody looking after climate change. What's wrong with these people? Just add it to the list, Gus. My gosh. <laughs> and the sad thing is our taxpayers, our tax dollars, we're funding that. We're funding these people. 
and these new jobs they create for some do-gooders sitting around twiddling their thumbs and pretending to be important, changing the world. It's Pete Buttigieg, uh, better known as Mayor Pete, better known as an incompetent, bumbling idiot who just doesn't know what his job is, but he's Secretary of Transportation for reasons that never have made sense. But he wants to talk about the transportation system. Uh, and again, by the way, it's not about roads and bridges and airports and sewer systems. Nope. It's all about climate change. Watch. Today at a moment of historic challenge, as well as opportunity in our transportation systems as they cope with profoundly disruptive forces that include continued shockwaves from the coronavirus pandemic, increasing threats from climate change, and the effects of decades of disinvestment. In decades of disinvestment. Okay. That's about the only thing he said that has anything to do with the transportation infrastructure. If we didn't do things that we should have been doing to fix roads and bridges and sewers and airports and ports and so on. But the idea that somehow these threats are the result of climate change, um, I just don't know where that comes from. But this is the guy who said that interstate highways were racist. Somehow he was able to equate racism to having highways. Just today, in fact, the House voted, and of course the House is controlled by the Republicans right now, but they voted uh, on a Parental uh, Rights Act mm -hmm. for uh, American parents, saying moms and dads should ultimately have the decisions about their children. Not one Democrat voted for that. I find that disturbing. You know, sometimes there's a bill that's innocuous enough. It's like, I believe in sunlight. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and vote for that. We're so divided and polarized that you put something out there that says parents ought to be the ones who are most responsible for their children. The Democrats say, no, we don't believe that. In fact, they went further. Some of them said that to vote for that bill would be fascism. Fascism. I I'm disturbed by that because it's like the Democrats don't even know what the word means. Fascism is not mothers and fathers raising their own children. Fascism is when the government takes your children from you and they raise them for you and they tell you how they will be raised and you have no say in the matter. That's a form of totalitarianism. That's fascism. The Democrats don't seem to understand what it is and they can lie all they want and say, oh, we wouldn't vote for that bill because it's uh, fascist. You ought to worry about a political party that thinks the government ought to be raising your children instead of you that thinks that your values aren't as good as the ones that the politicians would impose upon your children. Now, I don't know if you want to do this or not, Governor, but we do have in our list of clips today that very subject. If you wanted to go on yeah, and roll ready, that, we sure do. Let's look at Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. I see access as a problem. Um, I see parents being able to direct their child's um, education, and they are already in the lower 25 percentile, meaning a lot of those parents did not finish high school and cannot direct their, uh, could not finish their own education. I am extremely concerned that we would put money in their hands in that and that entire piece of life in the hands of parents who are not qualified to make those decisions. Now, it's interesting, this particular member of Congress who says that parents shouldn't be making the decision about putting their children in schools other than the ones that the government assigns their children to go to. What makes this so fascinating, because this member of Congress essentially says, parents, particularly poor parents, are too stupid to know what's best for their kids. They're not smart enough. They wouldn't make the best decisions, so we're going to make those decisions for those parents. You know what's really interesting? That member of Congress had, has her own children in private schools. Can you say hypocrisy? Because that's what it is when people want you to live by a rule they don't live by themselves. So she says, you, the general public, you're too stupid to make decisions about where your kids go to school. But she, a valued member of Congress, should be given that privilege, and by golly, she will exercise it. Hey, Mike Huckabee here. Listen, if you love your mom, apple pie, and being conservative, 
you know you ought to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and click the like button and show all the leftists out there that conservatives are thriving and patriotism is far from dead. Am I pandering too much? No way. I'm just getting started.